teaching is a form of community organizing, right? There's this myth, particularly about the civil rights movement, that the civil rights movement was only about organizing people into the streets, but it was also about organizing people into settings just like this classrooms, auditoriums, you think about the teaching tradition of the Mississippi Freedom Schools led by Fannie Lou Hamer, that was about actually young people, right? And people who were actually locked out of institutionalized spaces coming together to actually learn, learning as a radical political act. They're really, and what the civil rights movement teaches us really is that there are five ways to think about political participation. You first have the um, sort of uh, the electoral route, which is about voting, right? So right now we have a neo-fascist lunatic on one hand and a neoliberal liar on the other hand, right? And so whichever one you vote for, if you are a 17-year-old poor black boy in Flatbush or Ferguson, I'm not sure that either candidate is going to reduce your chances of being shot by the police with impunity. Uh, but electoral politics is one form of participation, right? Then you have economic uh, participation, which was really the Montgomery um, boycott model, which is about economic divestment, learning how to, and which was the Mizzou model, right? Learning how to say, if you don't do X, Y, Z, we are going to divest and withdraw funds, and that's going to actually uh, have leverage in the system. Number three, you have the organizational model, which is about things like this, organizing teach-ins. And then you have the direct action model, which is about getting people into the streets. Then you have what you talked about, which is the personal as political. Who you choose to love is a radical political act. So I think part of what we need to do is do the work of educating folks on the various forms of political participation, that it's not just electoral, but it's those other things as well. We have three more minutes on this panel. I'm gonna give it to you, Peyton, if you have anything. Sure. Yeah, man. So this is about education, right? Education, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. please. Why is education so important for like allowing people to even articulate their thoughts politically? Yeah, I think education is, is like Nelson Mandela said, you know, one of the most powerful weapons in which you can use to change the world. And, and I think that when we start to redefine what that looks like, when we start to redefine what education looks like, we can go beyond just the books and we can go beyond just the traditional like teaching in the classroom and realize that education looks so different, you know, in so many different ways. You know, just stepping out of your house and maybe walking to a different community and talking to people is a form of education. Um, and so, for me particularly, like learning about politics and using it as a tool to be able to, you know, break down a system of oppression from the inside was something that I had to get educated on at the University of Missouri. Um, I looked into the history, I read the books, I went to the university archives and, you know, read that there were only, you know, two black student body presidents to come before me since 1911 and realized what that would look like for campus if I were to win and what kind of power I would have with the administration to, you know, call out some of the issues with that platform that I had. And so I think that the education can, can be a crucial part of the organizing piece um, because you can realize exactly, a, a lot of times you're not even taught how oppressed you are. That's the biggest issue. You don't know what the issues are. You've, you have this inherent feeling you know, that I'm not equal, that, you know, that the system is rigged against me, but you don't have the words to be able to articulate to the people who matter, who have the power to change it. You know, and the statistics and you know how higher education works, best practices and tenure and all, you know, all of the different jargon and all of the different language, that's what I had to learn in order to be able to you know, help bring down you know, a system president and a chancellor. Um, because I couldn't have done it just a little undergrad not knowing anything about how the actual like, educational bu bureaucracy worked. You know, I didn't know who I was supposed to go to, who I was supposed to talk to, but I realized that part of education is knowing who are the key power players. It was black graduate students studying higher educational, uh, higher education leadership and policy analysis who worked with undergrads and told us this is the way in which you can go about taking down a system or changing the system. You know, it was certain things that were told to me that said, you know, if you were to say this in front of the board of curators and the board of governors or send this out to the governor, that's, that kind of education is what changed a lot at the University of Missouri and eventually led to $10 million being put into efforts of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so I think that the education is so important, but we have to get out of this mindset that you know, it's just sitting in the classroom. Because a lot of times it's just talking to people, it's identifying key power players and realizing that you don't have all the answers, but if you get a group of people who are in different areas who do, and you build that coalition, you can accomplish anything that you want to accomplish. I agree with that a whole bunch, man. Thank you guys, this awesome panel. Yeah.